This video is called Breaking Down a Blended Self-Paced Mastery Based System, and it is an examination of the three main components of the model. The success criteria for this lesson are, I can understand the advantages of using video lessons for direct instruction. I can recognize the usefulness of self-pacing structures for students and teachers, and I can explain the advantages of mastery based grading. So why do I recommend doing video lessons instead of lecture? So some of the reasons that I prefer video lessons and to lecturing are it lets me clone myself. So I can walk around the room talking to students and um, while other students are doing video lessons. Another reason, it helps the students catch up if a student missed a class, they can go ahead and watch that video lesson that they missed. Um, whereas if I was doing a lecture, they would have just missed that lecture and uh, I would have to catch them up in some other way. Or students can get ahead. If you've got a lesson ready for them, that is the next lesson for the one that they were working on in class that day, they could go ahead and work on that next lesson if you've got it ready and uh, move ahead. Otherwise, they would just sit around and be bored. And lastly, it frees up teacher time for human connection. So that's super important, right? Those human connections that we make with students, that's one of the most important things that we do in the classroom. It gives you time, if you're not standing in front of the classroom lecturing, you can take that opportunity to walk around and talk to your students, see what's going on with them in their lives, see what is happening uh, in the class, see what they're learning, what they're not learning. So those are uh, some of the reasons why I really prefer video lessons to lecturing. We got this little <clears throat> bit at the bottom here. Blended learning doesn't need to be pretty. It needs to be effective. All right, so here we have some statistics on blended learning. So these are questions that the Modern Classrooms Project asked teachers and students from different uh, schools that they worked with. Um, so I learned how to use technology in class. So 66% said um, they learned how to use technology in class uh, using the Modern Classrooms Project model uh, versus 47% uh, before using the model. I have a good personal relationship with my teacher. 71% said they that was true. Uh, after using the model and 65% said that was true before using the model. For teachers, they said, uh, I, used, I use technology effectively. So after using the model, 89% said that that was true. And prior to using the model, 70% said that was true. And I'm able to work closely with each of my students during class. So 100% of teachers said that that was true uh, after using the model and only 78% said that was true uh, before using the model. All right, so how does self-pacing work? So self-pacing usually occurs within a unit as opposed to within a six weeks or a semester. That's a really important concept. Um, a lot of people have a misconception that you self-pace within this really long time span, uh, but usually we just self-pace within a unit or even you can break it down into smaller chunks like than that if you need to. So self-pacing facilitates differentiation, which is super important in today's classroom. It builds self-regulation skills. You really uh, need to build those skills as a student to work in a self-paced classroom. And we use scaffolding and things to help students build those skills. And then self-pacing responds to each student's needs. So to each student's needs, super important. So uh, to the right, to the right here, I have this um, picture of my pacing tracker that I use. So this is just a pacing tracker from my current unit. So you can see here um, the lessons that we have. Uh, so lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, and these are the students' uh, names here. And uh, the students that have mastered each lesson get a little green mastered. Uh, and the students that need to revise the lesson, uh, this lets them know that they need to revise and I'll work with them to uh, revise the lesson. And then they'll go ahead and take a mastery check again and see how they do. Uh, if they revise it, then they move on to the next lesson and so on and so forth. So again, here are some statistics on self-pacing. 
So I can, can catch up if I miss class. So 83% of students said that was true after using the Modern Classrooms model. 70% said that was true uh, before using the model. I am responsible for my own learning. 89% said that that was true after using the model and 81% said that was true before using the model. For teachers, I provide students with adequate time to revise their work. After using the model, 93% said that that was true. And before using the model, only 70% said it was true. And I can easily help students that have missed class catch up. 100% of teachers said that that was true after using the model. And only 11% said that, that was true um, before using the model. And I know that that's true in my own case. I always had a really hard time catching students up. Um, but when students come into my class now after having missed a day or two, I just tell them which lessons they missed and they sit down and start working on those lessons. And I've got some anecdotal stuff from my own class. Um, so I ask students to fill out a self um, reflection survey after each unit. And so these are some uh, responses pulled from that from that re from that reflection. So what is one thing that is working well for you right now, Mr. Voss's class? Uh, and then these are some students who just said that uh, self pacing was working for them. So why mastery based grading? So mastery based grading is the third pillar of the of the model here. Um, before they progress to more advanced content, students must prove mastery of foundational skills. So mastery based grading prevents learning gaps. Really important, huge point. Builds student confidence. When a student feels like they have mastered a particular lesson, then they feel more confident to go on and try the next lesson rather than feeling like, well, I didn't get that one, but it's time to just move on and try the next one. And lastly, it prepares students for what's next. So again, when a student goes on to the next lesson, they feel ready to, to go on to the next lesson rather than just feeling like they have to go on because it's time. And over to the right is just an image from one of my mastery checks. Just a quick little four question, three question uh, quiz that gives the students a chance to, to answer some questions about what they know or don't know about the topic that we were learning for that lesson. Uh, it's really easy to grade and uh, I can just take a quick glance at it and see if the students uh, understand what they were learning about in that lesson or not. Finally, some statistics on mastery based grading. So students, I really understand what I'm learning. 77% said that was true after working on the mastery based model. 71% said that was true before. I'm capable of learning anything. 80% said that that was true after working on the model and only 73 said it was true before. So for teachers, I understand what each of my students has and has, ha has not mastered. So that's 93% after using the model and only 74% prior to. And I use data to provide effective targeted support to students. We're always talking about using data in our teaching. So 93% said that that was true after using the model and only 52% said that was true prior to using the model. And again, I've got some anecdotal evidence here from my own classroom. So what is one thing that is working well for you in Mr. Voss's class right now? So I feel like the concept of mastery checks are working well for me and I feel like I'm getting a lot of good information from them. Another student said mastery checks. The process of notes to practice to mastery checks is another thing that the student said. All right, everyone, keep asking questions. It's how you learn new things.